Welcome to History of the Atom. We've said that an atom is the smallest particle of an element that cannot be broken down further chemically. Now note that I said chemically. Since the late 30s and 40s, we've actually been able to break down the atom further, but that results in a loss of identity for that atom. It is, however, really cool, and we call it nuclear technology. These days, we're also able to see atoms under very high-powered microscopes, but we've had ideas about atoms for far longer than we've had these fancy microscopes. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about where our first ideas of atoms have come from, and we'll take a look at how, we'll start taking a look at how our understanding has really evolved over time. In this part, we're going to be talking about from the time of ancient Greece through about the 1800s, and in part two of this video, we'll catch up to more modern times. Our earliest idea about atoms actually came from a philosopher instead of a scientist. Democritus is the name of an ancient Greek that lived around 400 BC. His major idea was that all stuff in the world was made up of tiny, tiny pieces he called atomos. Atomos is a Greek word that translates roughly to indivisible. So what does indivisibility have to do with it? Well, we can take uh, an example of what he was talking about. We have, a, we have a noodle right here. And basically what Democritus said was, if you take this and you break it in half, okay, you now have a smaller piece. Now if you break that in half, you have yet again a smaller piece. And if you keep going, okay, keep seeing it get smaller, we're breaking in half. Once again, we have a smaller piece. And then an even smaller piece. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you can't break it down any further. Now, this is a very small piece, and you can't even see that anymore. Uh, but that's where his idea came from, this idea that if you break something down over and over and over again, you'll eventually get to a piece that cannot be broken down further, and he called that a tomos. Now, according to Democritus, a tomos actually came in many sizes and shapes. For example, uh, the atomos of water were very smooth and slippery, which allowed water to flow over itself whereas the atomos of a solid object had tiny hooks in it that let it hook onto other atomos to form a very rigid structure. So even though his ideas are what we know now to be not accurate, uh, he had some good thought processes behind stuff that he had no way of ever being able to see. However, one of the major deficiencies behind Democritus' thinking, uh, and being a philosopher, he did not really follow scientific processes. Democritus did not really have any evidence to back up his claims. So that was sort of the major problem with Democritus, and we're not going to see any evidence in a scientific sort of way of talking about it uh, until we fast forward about 2,000 years and uh, we get to John Dalton. So in the 1800s, John Dalton came up with the first modern atomic theory. And he actually based his sort of ideas on actual evidence that he had gathered and experiments that he conducted. Sort of the big deal with John Dalton having the first atomic theory is that uh, it could be tested experimentally. Dalton's atomic theory consisted of five parts, and let's take a look at what those are. So these are the five points of Dalton's atomic theory. Um, we're going to walk through it step by step, and I'll briefly explain what it's talking about. We're going to notice as we move forward in these lessons that most of these are not actually true, but you will also notice that he got really, really close with a few of them. So let's look at the first part of this. All matter is composed of very small particles called atoms. Great. Good job, Dalton. You got that one. Uh, number two, all atoms of a given element are identical. Uh, close. We're actually going to see in a few videos that that's not entirely true, but it's very close. Uh, number three, atoms cannot be created, destroyed, or subdivided. Again, really close. I mean, he's mostly right. You can't, you can't create, you can definitely not create them, destroy them, or subdivide them uh, until we start talking about nuclear technology. Number four, in chemical reactions, atoms of one element can combine with atoms of another element to form compounds. Great, you got another one. Good job, Dalton. And in the last one, atoms of different elements can be distinguished from each other by mass. Now that is not true, okay, he did not really get that one correct, but he was close with that one as well. Not as close as the other two, but pretty close. Ultimately, we can represent Dalton's sort of model of the atom uh, with a simple round sphere. No features, okay, completely featureless. This sphere is typically how we represent Dalton's model of the atom. As we continue into the second part of this video, we'll learn about what some of those features of the atom are and uh, who the people are that came up with them.